Welcome everybody uh, to the Near West Side Partners weekly webinar. Today is Wednesday, February 10th, and um, my name is Lindsay St. Arnold Bell. I'm the Associate Director at Near West Side Partners. I'll be your host today. Um, Barb Scotty will be back next week, uh, along with Anna Wyrick from Near West Side Partners staff to talk about our CNI action activities. I have a brief introduction before we get into our interview with um, our members from Marquette and the International Town and Gown Association. Um, so unless you're living in a cave, or I guess especially if you're living in a cave, you can't help but notice how cold it is outside. This beautiful picture is from the historic Concordia neighborhood. Uh, it is incredibly and dangerously cold out there. So we did wanna share some cold weather safety tips with you all. Um, you know, First and foremost, be prepared. Make sure you're talking uh, to your neighbors and checking your weather reports regularly. This is the one time where talking about the weather is 100% important and uh, always on topic. When you're at home, make sure that you're heating your home with devices that are approved to be used indoors and that you're keeping any space heaters that you have free from debris or um, away from anything that might be flammable. We have had, unfortunately, a lot of fires in the city recently, including one um, that hit the near west side on 25th Street. So we really wanna make sure that people are staying safe and warm in their homes. And when you're outside, um, please make sure that you're wearing appropriate clothing and that you're covering your exposed skin. Frostbite can hit within minutes, um, so especially when it's as cold as it's been. So you wanna make sure that you're covering everything, including your nose, your ears, your fingers. Uh, your face mask is perfect to help keep you a little bit extra warmer. Um, hypothermia can kick in very quickly as well. So you could, um, within 30 minutes of exposure, um, begin demonstrating uh, symptoms of hypothermia. So make sure that you're watching your neighbors and watching out for others that might be um, susceptible to that. Also uh, important to remember, while we do live in Wisconsin, you wanna be very careful about your alcohol consumption during this time. You might feel warmer, but alcohol can lower your body temperature much faster. And then of course, um, make sure that you're safe when you're traveling. You wanna keep blankets in your car, keep warm boots and gloves, and um, keep your gas tank at least half full so that you don't have any trouble starting your car. Uh, we know that many of you are worried about neighbors who might be susceptible um, to the cold. Um, so we do have a list here of the warming centers that are open. Um, for a complete list, you can call 211. They are a wonderful resource if you are looking to assist somebody who you think might um, need to, to get in from the cold. There's a couple other quick updates before we move on to our interview. Um, we are hosting a, a couple neighborhood meetings uh, this month to talk about the neighborhood markers. That's part of our CNI action activities. So you can see on the screen here that there are dates coming up um, tonight for the historic Concordia neighborhood, Saturday for Cold Spring Park, and on Wednesday the 17th for the Avenues West neighborhood. If you are interested in attending one of these meetings, please email barb at coordinator2 at nearwestsidepartners.org. Uh, next Wednesday, Anna and Barb will also be um, hosting the, the weekly webinar with the artists that are um, designing the neighborhood markers. So if you're interested, definitely tune in for, to that. You can also visit the website, um, nearwestsidemke.org slash action activities to take the mural survey and watch the artist bios from last week. We are also doing our best to share information that we receive with our neighbors about the COVID-19 vaccine and how to prevent um, access, how to prevent um, exposure to COVID-19. 
you know, we've been doing this almost a full year. So make sure you're wearing your mask, that you're staying six feet apart and that you're avoiding large crowds. Um, even after um, receiving the vaccine, you do wanna make sure that you wear a mask and that you're, you're uh, adhering to these physically distanced uh, guidelines until we know that it's 100% safe. Um, I have heard that uh, many of our local pharmacies will begin um, giving vaccines to those 65 and older. Um, so definitely check out healthymke.com for more information on where you can find those vaccines. Also wanted to share a program that um, is hosted by Advocate Aurora Health. It's their Fresh Start Smoking Cessation Program. If you think 2021 is the year that you're ready to quit smoking, you can join the four week smoking cessation program. Um, it's free. Anybody who wants to quit can participate um, and it's just four weeks long. If you are interested in participating in this program, you can email me at associate at nearwestsidepartners.org or drop um, a comment in the chat or online and we'll make sure that you get that program flyer. So now I would like to welcome our two guests, Beth Bagwell from ITGA and Dr. Dan Bergen from Marquette University to talk about um, the International Town and Gown Association and the upcoming virtual conference. I'm gonna Stop sharing my screen here. And Beth and Dan, it's good to see you. It's great to be here, Lindsay, thank you. This is a true honor. So I'm so happy to be in with this group. Well, Beth, we are so um, honored to have you join us. And I think I'd like to start with you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the International Town and Gown Association and what it does? Sure. The International Town and Gown Association is a nonprofit that provides resources, networking, and professional development opportunities to college and universities, which we refer to as GOWN, and municipalities, town, globally. Uh, a sample of our resources include our College Town Resource Center that focuses on best practices and strategies for challenges and opportunities often encountered in college towns. And we recently launched our webinar series that includes um, our Courageous Conversations, uh, launched at the 2020 conference just days after the police killing of Black father and artist George Floyd, and now is a key part of the ITGA Equity and Inclusion Initiative. We just started our Town Gown Turnaround Series, which focuses on strengthening partnerships between town and university stakeholders and addresses the challenges and opportunities we are facing in 2021 and beyond. Our launch included Keith Stanley, uh, Executive Director of Near West Side Partners to discuss strategies that have been used to support the hashtag made in the Near West Side bid. And as you can imagine, he was very popular. And then we partnered with Leon Andrews, Director of National League of Cities Race, Equity and Leadership to offer a one day training for our members and friends of ITGA. Some of our members uh, offer regional conferences uh, annually. And of course, we're here uh, to discuss our annual ITGA City and University Relations Conference, which is May the 24th or the 26th. Yes, that is very exciting. Um, I'm hoping that Beth and Dan, you can talk, tell us a little bit about what the virtual conference will be, um, will entail, what will be covered and what we can expect uh, the format to be like. Do you want to start off Beth or do you? Uh, well, one of the things um, we're working with, I have the privilege of working with the conference planning committee to bring the diverse and vibrant city to our attendees in creative ways. And the tracks and planning reflect that. Uh, and I thought Dan might wanted to elaborate on some of the wonderful things that uh, you all are thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, and I think in thinking about this conference, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge and, and thank Lindsay and the Near West Side Partners for hosting us for this conversation, but also serving as a partner um, in planning uh, for this particular 
conference, as well as visit Milwaukee. Um, and they've, they've been a strong partner with us as well. Um, and ITGA, Beth, it's been wonderful to work with you. So um, yeah, this year's, this year's conference obviously is gonna bring um, some different and unique elements, uh, given the fact that we are, we are hosting uh, in partnership uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so there will, it will be fully virtual uh, March 24th, or I'm sorry, May 24th through the 26th. Um, but it's really an opportunity as we've explored this, this relationship uh, to showcase the outstanding efforts and initiatives that are happening uh, in town gown, town and gown relations uh, across the country and around the globe. Um, and one of the real values of this virtual space is that we can attract hopefully uh, individuals from around the world uh, to join us for this conference. Um, so we, uh, as, as Beth mentioned, we are very interested in, in the spaces of university government relations, off-campus and neighborhood relations, uh, efforts around diversity and inclusion, um, and the ways that in which cities and universities and, and communities are partnering to advance those. And of course, uh, we can't ignore uh, the impacts of COVID-19. And, and how that's really hit our communities. So that'll be, those are, those are some of the sort of high level themes. And can you tell us a little bit about um, what kinds of proposals Marquette and ITGA are looking for, for the conference and how organizations and the community could get involved? Yeah, so, um, I can I can start off. I've um, uh, had the opportunity in the past to attend ITGA several times um, and present, and I can tell you that um, it's it's really spans quite a breadth um, and depth of topics. Um, and so, uh, starting from a position of saying I'm you know we're advancing work in partnership with local university here in Milwaukee or uh, in another city. Um, starting from that place as a community organization is one, one good place to start. And then, and then kind of digging down into these ideas that I had mentioned earlier, right? The neighborhood and government relations, the off-campus student housing and living, uh, the anchor initiatives um, that, that various organizations around the country are leading, um, campus safety and security and the ways that uh, our, our universities are partnering with local law enforcement. Um, it, we just, I think it's important and I want to state again, now more than ever, campuses in our, are critical to the communities and of course communities are critical to our campuses. And so we, we really want to elevate that, those work or that work and those partnerships in a meaningful way. That's exactly right. I will have to say that um, Marquette and uh, the city of Milwaukee have really stepped up to the plate because we had anticipated doing an in-person conference. So we transitioned quickly, uh, but the creative tracks uh, are really built upon the strengths that uh, Milwaukee uh, and Marquette has together and then that are also broad enough uh, to be inclusive to anybody who wants to submit a proposal. So we're really looking forward to uh, receiving these proposals. Um, the call for proposal is open until February the 19th. And um, so we invite all, anyone who has uh, questions, they can reach out to me at Beth at ITGA.org, or they can reach out to Dan or Dr. Bergen, and uh, we'll be more than happy to help do some, uh, to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, and Beth, building on that, I'll just quickly say that the, the themes for this uh, this year's conference really focus on music. Um, and so as many of perhaps our near West Side residents are aware or not, um, right, we, we know the, the Bodines, the Violent Femmes, uh, you know, Steve Miller, Les Paul, these are, these are musicians all from the Milwaukee area. And I did not know this, but found out in this process that Liberace was in fact from Milwaukee. Um, so I learned something new in that process. And I think um, our hope is to really infuse that sort of, that theme of, of the vibrancy of Milwaukee, the community and, and it's, it's lifeblood and music, um, right? And, and um, helping our attendees understand that is really, really critical to who we are. That's great. You know, I, I know it's a, a new platform um, in a, a new world going virtual. Um, but I'm wondering if either of you can talk a little bit about um, 
the, the virtual experience for a conference. Um, obviously, there will be some breakout rooms. Will there be an opportunity to connect or network um, like there is at a traditional conference? Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the opportunity to connect one-on-one uh, -on -one or with groups and with our sponsors uh, is uh, critical for this process. And so we have been vetting systems, uh, looking at different ones and have decided which direction we're going in based on the fact that that networking comp component is in there and our members constantly remind us that one of the most important things that we offer our members is an opportunity to network in different venues. So it's extremely important. Yeah, just to, just to echo exactly what Beth said, I, I mean, they have been doing a great job reviewing different virtual platforms. And I think there's some really, really exciting and innovative ways that, that, or, that companies are creating for the virtual landscape. So hats off, Beth. Thanks. Well, again, we're very excited to work with you. You've all been extremely uh, creative in your approach. We love the music theme. Uh, <laughs> the, our board was very excited when we saw the tracks and the music uh, in the in the uh, the the, uh, the song that goes with each one of the tracks. If you uh, if our audience uh, who are listening in have not had a chance to see this, it's really worth going to the call for proposal page on the website just to listen to the songs that go with each one of these. And, you know, music is such an important part of our life. Uh, I think we're trying to find ways to lift our spirits during this time. And so uh, we could not have a better host that we have this year. This is uh, a very unique experience. And we are so excited to be working with uh, Marquette in Milwaukee. This has just been an absolute and near West Side Partners and uh, all of the other um, stakeholders within this group. It's been really wonderful. Great. Visit Milwaukee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I do have a slide that I'll share in just a few moments and we'll open it up for questions. But before I do, is there anything that I have not asked or anything that we haven't covered um, that either of you would like to share? I, I, the, the, the one thing that I would reiterate over and over again is that it has been a joy to work with this committee. This is the first. Last year we were going to go to the city of Boulder and uh, see you Boulder. And that was when we had to pivot very quickly and we had about six weeks to actually determine our platform and then transfer and pivot, which is a word for COVID, this COVID period, we had to pivot. This year, uh, we had a host that has been working with us the whole time so we can really offer a, a premium uh, conference experience that's virtual. So we're extremely excited. I don't think we could have had a better host to work with this year. So we just are so appreciative of the resiliency that everyone has shown and the can-do attitude as we bring this uh, to fruition. It's very exciting. Yeah, and, and Beth, just to, to comment on that and, and maybe talking a little bit about the, the benefits of membership with ITGA for cities and universities, but I can tell you as someone who, who has been um, closely working with this organization for the past five years in my role in community engagement, um, to have a national or an international organization like ITGA um, really focused on supporting the cultivation of partnerships between universities and their cities um, and those cities include both government, the community organizations, nonprofits, um, has been incredible. It's, it's been such a value add to the work that I do um, in terms of the network that I have and the contacts. And so I just, I just wanna say thank you, Beth, for your leadership in this space, because it's, it's so important, um, perhaps now more than ever. Well, I really appreciate that comment. Uh, our mission is to strengthen relationships between campuses and communities. And one way we do this is to have the stakeholders from both groups come together and learn uh, as a team on ways that they can, strategies that can be implemented in a collaborative way. Our joint organizational town and gown rate allows for this. And this approach has also, um, as you were talking about, Dan, allowed our members to learn about Near West Side Partners mm -hmm. and the great work that you're doing in your community because we um, have had several different presentations on that. And that's one reason we wanted uh, you all to host this conference because it's a great work that you've accomplished through your partnerships, which to me is just phenomenal. 
I went to South Africa to work with a team of people there. I went with the team to work with a team there. And one of the things that I wanted before I left was that glossy brochure of near West Side partners that Ron has sent me so that I could share it with them of the great work that can happen when you have the vision for it and we have the different stakeholders in place. So I've been a champion for your work for quite some time. Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. That's great. Um, unfortunately, we are not live on Facebook at the moment, but I know we are going to share this video. And when we do, we want to make sure that anybody who has any questions um, knows where to uh, email them or to learn more. Um, so we do have um, Dr. Dan's email here, danbergen at marquette.edu. You can also visit itga.org slash conference 2021. And Beth, uh, is it, um, do we recommend that people reach out to you directly with any questions they might have? Sure, Beth at itga.org. Wonderful. Well, I do wanna thank you both so much for joining us today. I think this conference is going to be really interesting. We're really excited to highlight the partnerships with um, our anchor institutions, Marquette University, and all the work that they're doing here in the Near West Side. And uh, I think this is such a unique platform to get the word out. So thank you both. Thank you so much for everything you're doing and thank you for this opportunity. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Thanks for hosting us today. And thanks again, Beth. My pleasure. And with that, uh, we can wrap up our weekly Wednesday webinar. I want to thank everybody who uh, joined us today on Zoom and who watched us later on Facebook. Um, do tune in next week, um, February 17th, for a uh, discussion about the Choice Neighborhood Initiative Action Activity Neighborhood Markers. Um, that will be hosted by Barb Scotty with Anna Wyrick, and they will have the artists um, uh, featured uh, during that webinar as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>